Welcome aboard the North Yorkshire Moors Railway for a journey back in time to the golden age of steam. Good afternoon, can I say tickets, please? Every year, half a million visitors come to marvel at these miracles of Victorian engineering. I came almost married into this. Keeping it all on track are a dedicated team full of pride, passion and true Yorkshire grit. Oh, be honest, we love it. Engine shed manager Piglet is in charge of all things mechanical. I've just pranged it into the side of the building. Got that Miley Cyrus song in my head now. Boss Chris has to balance the books. I'm not the fat controller. Signalman Alistair works the points. No rest of the wicked. And there's ticket inspector Bertie Blower. Oh. You better not film this, though, cos no. my wife spots it. This time, it's one of the railway's busiest and biggest events of the year, the Autumn Steam Gala. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. What fun. I love it. Wedding planner Tim makes a major booking blunder. If a train comes in during the ceremony, I personally think that might add to it. And the temperamental star of the gala, 92 Squadron, threatens to ruin the show. It can't be a bit of drama before a gala. I wish I never woke up this morning. It's a roller coaster ride through glorious country. This is the Yorkshire Steam Railway. All aboard. Have you got a ticket for the dog? It's September, and the North Yorkshire Moors Railway is gearing up for one of their most popular events, the Autumn Steam Gala. The three-day extravaganza is a rare chance for the public to see heritage steam engines gathered from all around the country. For General Manager Chris Price, the event isn't just about the cash that the expected 3,000-plus visitors will bring. The North Yorkshire Moors Railway is perceived as some as being kind of like the Champions League, being in that kind of top echelon of, of railways. And as such, you know, we've got a standard to maintain. The big challenge with the gala every year is keeping that event fresh, so we have to look at more and more imaginative ways to give that wow factor to the event. And the best way to keep the steam fans coming in is by hiring new and exciting engines but that can be easier said than done. Engine shed boss Piglet and head boilersmith Mark are 150 miles away at the Neen Valley Railway in Cambridgeshire to inspect a big name signing for the gala lineup. I need to have a look underneath because I want to have a look at the main steam pipes. Oh, that's mint, isn't it? 92 Squadron, a 1948 bullied light Pacific engine, is named after a famous Spitfire Squadron. A perfect fit for the RAF theme of this year's gala. Chris, our general manager, he's ex-RAF, and he's wanted to do a bit of an RAF flavour this year with the yeah. 100th anniversary yeah. going on. Yeah. The Southern Region thought it'd be a good scheme to name a batch of locos after the Battle of Britain, and the 92 Squadron just had to be the top scoring squadron in the Battle of Britain. It might fit the theme, but Piglet and Mark need to be sure the engine's in good enough fettle to be one of the stars of their event. Time to start the inspection. We've paid a lot of money for to come up to us. We want to make sure that it runs. Big in here. Dark. First thing I noticed straight away is the, the brick arch. Brand new. It looks like it's barely had a fire in it, really. You're looking pretty good, aren't you? Piglet is checking the engine's running gear, but he soon gets distracted. Hiya. Hiya, Miss Sarah. Yeah, Hiya. hi. Oh, Piglet. Oh, hi. You're another Piglet, so that's also my nickname as well. Really? Yeah. Two of us, then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I was the only one. <laughs> Two Piglets in the steam world. What are the chances? Sarah, uh, sorry, Piglet, is the general manager of Neen Valley Railway. Nice bit of kit, isn't it? Yeah, she's beautiful. On a sunny day with blue sky behind her, she really pops out, so... Yeah. yeah. We just need to make sure it's in ship-shape condition, which it certainly looks at. 
92 squadron passes after a thorough once-over. Mark is well impressed. A bit different from what we've got at the minute. It's bright, it's colourful. Can't see any problems with it at all. But I think the putters will love it. It sounds like this engine could be the star of the show. The question is, do you reckon we'll get it on the back of a transit van? Back in Yorkshire, the first Gala engine is arriving. And it's a pint-sized corker. Douglas is a former RAF service engine. 100 this year, Douglas has worked through two world wars. What do you reckon, back a shirt further? The old boy is the only one of its kind in the world. And this is the very first time Douglas has been loaned out to another railway. Oh, chaps, how's it going? Chris right. used to be the boss at Talathlin Railway, where Douglas lives and has pulled some serious strings to prise it away from them. Well, it looks nice. It's like giving us the crown jewels a bit, this one, I think. Is that a working out for you, Barney? The man responsible for safely lifting the crown jewels off the delivery lorry is head fitter Nick. What do you reckon? Centre of gravity is round. Before they can lift the engine, Nick has to make sure it's perfectly balanced. It's an awkward thing to lift. It's not like lifting up something nice and square and rectangular. It's got lumps in all the wrong places. Can you pull your front one out a bit, Paul? It's just like they don't drop it. No pressure, Nick. Yeah, and a bit more, please, Charlie. Have we got any tension or anything yet? Going up. As they lift the engine, it starts to list badly. It's trying to roll the loco over, Charlie. One wrong move and it's in danger of toppling over. Down, please. Dead steady. They're going to try and line it back up with the track. Whoa! It's back to the drawing board. North Yorkshire Moors Railway is at full pelt, preparing for their autumn steam gala. Dozens of railway volunteers are getting the place spruced up for the three-day event, now just a week away. Gala's one of our big weekends of the year. It's um, very important that uh, everything's looking spick and span. The weather does take it out on all our infrastructure. This station is our second home, really, isn't it? Or in your case, Chris, first home. <laughs> Someone who's not feeling so at home is pint-sized engine RAF Douglas. Headfitter Nick and his team have been struggling to lift the priceless engine off its delivery lorry. Are you lads ready? After a major rethink, they're ready for another try. Well, we've had to counterbalance the loco, so we've chucked some scrap in one side. And hopefully it might lift a bit squarer this time. One final adjustment, adding some Chris-sized ballast. Right, well, let's try again. It's going to be a balancing act, isn't it? Got to go up, please, Charlie, so we clear this. Back must be up now. Oh, yeah, you're flying yeah. now, mate. Right, we'll just have a look at it. Yeah. Steady as a rock. All right, Med. Sound job. Douglas is finally balanced. That was as awkward as an awkward thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Now they just need to lower her down. Down on rope, please. We thought it was going to be a lot heavier in its base. We counterbalanced that, we readjusted the straps, and it went lovely. Are you all flanges in? That's the first Gala engine to have safely arrived. The publicity for this is already out there, where the leaflets are printed, the social media's done, the website's updated. My old railway meets my new railway. Over at Railway HQ, tickets are selling fast. Good morning, North Yorkshire Moss Railway. But an event that relies on temperamental old steam engines is always a worry for marketing boss Laura. Every year, we create a brochure which pulls all the event together. 
but they're 100 year old engines and they do always run. Fingers crossed we won't disappoint anybody that comes to the event. But yeah, it can be frustrating at times. Are you travelling today or is it tomorrow? Unbeknown to Laura, Piglet's just discovered all's not well. One of the gala's big signings, 92 Squadron, has got a serious issue. Hello, Mark. Hello, mate. Uh, problem. Like what? 92 Squadron. I've had an email uh, last night and it's got a crack in the firebox. Since Piglet and Mark inspected the engine, it's developed a crack in the back section of the boiler. Unless the crack is fixed, it won't be able to run. All right. Cheers, dude. Not good. Not good at all. Piglet's got a choice. He can either try and repair it somehow or find a replacement. But with only days before the gala, neither option is ideal. It's a bit late now to be going and find another engine somewhere. It's reckoned that of the thousands of steam engines that once graced our railways, just over a hundred are still running. So finding one at such short notice, especially one that will fit in with the RAF theme and draw the crowds, is a tall order. Question for you. Kieran's mentioned this morning that 257 Squadron's recently back in traffic. Do you know if that's true? Where's that from? Swanage. At least that keeps your theme of your gala going. Manston out of service. Sir Keith Park under maintenance. After an intense ring around, it becomes clear they won't be able to find a replacement. It's like Chris. Cheers, bye. So they have no choice. They must try and fix 92 Squadron. Mark can weld it, he can do the repair. It's whether we've got time to do it, whether the inspectors who come out and examine it afterwards are available to do it. There's loads of logistics. Piglet must now get the engine delivered as soon as possible. So the troublesome 92 Squadron is making its journey from Cambridgeshire to North Yorkshire. It's working its way through Pickering now, on its way to this yard. After a three-hour journey, the unique-looking engine arrives on site. The nickname for these, even back in steam days, was spam cans, because they reckon they look like a tin of spam. So, yeah, the spam can has arrived. They look really big when they're on a wagon, don't they? It's got to fix it now. Piglet's scheduled a boiler inspection for tomorrow. Oh, there she is which means Mark must get the engine fixed today. The problem is a crack in the metal at the back of the boiler. First time I've seen it, so literally, where my finger is, you can see the crack. Kind of where I expect it to be, so it's always a bonus. It's not a massive crack, but it's going to be awkward to fix as Mark needs to access it from both sides. Well, that makes life easier. I was thinking I might have to take all the firewall door off, but... Uh... If I cut it down there, down there. Sounds like a good plan, but steam engines are never that simple. This type of engine is not something we deal with on a, on a daily basis uh, because we don't have one. So when it comes to jobs like this, you're sort of playing catch up a little bit as to what goes where. Oh, that makes life a bit harder. I've got a funny feeling. Right behind that. Which means, unfortunately, Mark's going to have to take the firebox doors off after all. It can't be a bit of drama before a gala. Get some engines that come here absolutely fine. It's a bit like a lucky dip. You don't quite know what you're going to get. That's quite heavy, that is. <laughs> To weld the crack, he first needs to remove the stud next to it. You're not grinding. With the head of the stud, also called a stay, removed, it should just be a matter of drilling the rest out. Normally, drill out a stay and then it breaks off. These are quite big stays, so they're just not wanting to break off. But the bolt's not going anywhere. Time for a rethink. 
Big gun. It's a nice big tool which uh, puts all the effort in for me. Even the big drill isn't shifting it. Everything we see with the torch isn't going smoothly. And it's sweating my ass off. I'm literally soaked. Oh, here we go again. What are we up to? Plan C? Plan C is use a cutting torch to melt the bolt. This is plan melt it out. And there Mark was thinking this would be a simple job. Ah! The oxy bottle's empty. As well as its stable of engines, NYMR also has a fleet of freight wagons. Steam-driven rail freight once ruled the world, moving everything from milk to mail. And for some die-hard rail enthusiasts, heritage freight trains symbolize the authentic glory days of steam. So the NYMR are keen to feature them at the gala. Yeah, we've got about 35 minutes, otherwise we'll miss our slot. Most of the old freight wagons are now stored in sidings scattered about the 18-mile line. You want to take that one? It's almost as ugly as you are! So for Kieran and Alistair, today's mission is to collect together the once-loved wagons to create a special freight train for the event. To get the job done, they need a reliable workhorse. So Kieran has decided to use one of his favourites, and it's a diesel engine, the old Class 37. Two years since I last drove this engine. She's 1750 horsepower. Marvin the Bugatti Veyron. We are ready to fire. How easy was that? That is the future. Well, Kieran, it was the future 50 years ago. He's about to move, but he's sort of, um, you know, too busy playing with his horn at the moment. <laughs> as long as we're at Gotham by 10 past 10, it's all good. It's a pride thing. I like to run on time if we can. But Kieran also has another agenda. I'm off to do my tea room challenge today. But he's going to every tea room and seeing what I can get out of him. Basically, blagging as much free food as he can. He's got that look about him. What are you plotting, Mr. Murray? Off we go, off we go. Nice listening drive. The lads have 14 wagons to collect. They arrive at Gothland Station for their first pickup. Well, that's what Alistair thinks. OK, this is going to be mildly hilarious. Hello, Karen. <laughs> Hello, Kieran. Hello, Kieran. You are looking very nice today. Thanks very much. What about one of them steak pies? A steak pie, would you like it warming oh, up? Oh, yes, please. It's nice, very nice. It can't be pie. And cake. Right. Do you got, yeah, I've got my radio. <laughs> Right, we're getting there, aren't we? Oh, we're definitely getting somewhere. No thanks to you, Kieran. Right, go out to driver. Can you ease couplings, please? That's the first six wagons collected. Next stop, Levisham. Levisham is the best station on the railway for Bothwell. Time for Kieran to turn on the charm again. Hello. But are you looking very nice today, all of you? No, no, the best tea room this is on the railway. Nice one. Can I have a, a Bovril, please? The tea ladies aren't fooled. But he still manages to get his free Bovril. Right, I'm off to go and have this. I'll just go and sit down here. While Kieran enjoys his spoils, Alistair's getting prickly. Try not. Ow! Christmas tree up my trouser leg, nettles everywhere. Right, car to driver. We're all ready to go. That's it, so we've picked up our wagons we need now. We're heading towards Pickering. We're doing all right. And I've got our Bovril, so I'm happy. They've got their 14 wagons. I'm just coming up on the carriage and wagon yard now. OK, get through the signal, Kieran. But Alistair's trip isn't over just yet. Oh, I think... <laughs> It's a crucial day at the engine shed, one that could make or break the railway's steam gala plans. That water's not coming out the front end. 
Mark has eventually managed to weld the crack in 92 Squadron Engine's firebox. But the engine can only run in the gala if an external inspector passes the weld as strong enough. It has to withstand the extreme pressure of the boiler. We've got the boiler's back to turn up in about a couple of hours' time. There's a bit of pressure on. We've obviously spent a lot of money on getting it here for the gala, and if it doesn't run for the gala, then it'd be a bit sort of a letdown. There's going to be people travelling from all over the country to come and see this engine. So hopefully it can redeem itself and go away with its head held high. To test that the weld has sealed the crack and stopped the leak, they need to pump high-pressured water into the boiler. Now the pump is on, the pressure in the gauge should rise. But it doesn't. The engine is leaking from other places. Lots of them. There's too much water leaking at the front end to be able to get any pressure on the boiler. Piston packing is leaking, the drain cocks aren't shutting, so we're just trying to work out what we can do. With two hours until boiler inspection, it's not looking good. Time to bring in the boss, Piglet. Yeah, so there's water pressure in the boiler. Only about 20 or 30 psi. Yeah, but it's yeah. got pressure in, hasn't it? But there's that water that's coming out of there. It's coming out faster than we can put it in. Leaks like a wok with holes in it. Never rains with pause, does it? If they can't stop the leaks, they won't be able to build sufficient pressure to test the new weld. So what we've got to do is we've got to look at the worst leaks, right, and try and stem the worst leaks. It's going to help, isn't it? I'm going to get wet here. Ugh. Ah! Oh, it's, oh, it's going to be... Ah! Oh, stupid, stupid engine. I want to go home. I wish I'd never woke up this morning. It's the day before the gala. And engineers Piglet and Mark have been working frantically to get 92 Squadron ready for a crucial boiler inspection in an hour's time. You never know, on the day we're having, you might need it again. If it doesn't pass the inspection, their star billing won't be able to run at this year's steam weekend. There's a lot of work to do to there to not guarantee it's going to be fine. To test the engine, they're trying to get the boiler up to pressure, but it's leaking like a sieve. Have you tried opening it? Shut yeah, it. tried that, but made a lot of difference. They need to tackle the biggest leak coming from the engine's regulator. That's the throttle to you and me. The problem is, is what we call the regulator or the throttle, that's and that's really under that under that tin cover. Then it's under a cover under that. The longer we go on, the longer it's going to take to do. Yeah, you can start taking it off. I'll go get some tea. If this doesn't work, then it's not going to work at all. Thirty-two nuts there are. I, tell you, I have no idea what time it is. I don't look. I've got him some tea. I put some sugar in it, but half the bag fell in, so it's going to be quite sweet. Look at the size of that nut on there. That fell off. <laughs> I'll go find it. It, it, it. it made plenty of noise, so I think it's made it to the ground. I've got it in one of the pockets on the wheels somewhere. It went dink, 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 ting. Found it! <laughs> Don't drop anything else, cos I've got my head in here. Ah! You're an idiot. He walked off with me tea. When they finally get the cover off, the unfamiliar design is a lot more complicated than they thought. I'm looking at my miserable face in the water reflection. The bloke who designed this wants a slap. He does, doesn't he? <laughs> it might be a good time to consult the user manual. Screwdriver slot. Locating stud steel, adjusting over flush. Makes IKEA instructions seem a doddle. We don't know. We don't know what we're doing. It's just making sure we carefully take it to bits without damaging it. Then they come up with an idea of trying to seal the leak with a rubber ring, just as the inspector arrives. Hello. He's a man who takes his responsibility very seriously. If these heritage steam boilers are not operated and maintained properly, 
there's a very, very real risk of um, something like this blowing up. It's going back together, so like literally an all or nothing now. But you're in down, so it's half of you, right? Yep. With the engine still in bits and the inspector's patience starting to run out, Mark tightens the last few nuts. It's a heavy job. Everything's heavy. Time is pressing on. It's a Friday. If it doesn't work this time, game over. I'm going to, I'm going to turn the water and see what happens. Fingers crossed, now. This is it. It's now or nothing. That's going up a lot quicker, isn't it? 140. Is that, is that dark now? 190 now. Eureka! The rubber ring has worked. It stopped the leak so the pressure can build up. Right, shut it off completely. Turn it all off. Turn it all off. Isolate that valve there, please, mate. That's it. We're, we're, we're up to pressure. Now the inspector can test if the weld is strong and true. If you hear a loud bang, it means something's done something it shouldn't be doing, so. You know, if we don't hear anything, that's a good sign. Silence is golden. The weld has held firm. Well, the welder must have done, done a good job, cos there's no water coming through. Oh, well. <laughs> I can recommend the welder, then, can't yeah. I? Yes, I'm happy. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Never in doubt, was it, lads? Yeah. Well done, lads. Cheers, thanks. <laughs> Bit of a relief, that, to be honest. What I need is... A cup of tea. Yeah, cup of tea. If anyone wants one, follow me. <laughs> With the engine fixed, there's just one last job to complete the gala preparations. As the gala starts tomorrow, what they've got to do is they've got to shunt everything into the right order so that in the morning, the right engine is at the front of the queue to go off. It's just like a big train set. It's a moment to savour, especially for Boilersmith Mark. I'm just looking out the window here, and literally, all I can see from my eyes is engines. All the engines we wanted are here. All the engines are working. Perfect, just what we want. It's the first day of the gala, and it's an early start. Amidst the gloom, an army of steam-mad volunteers are already helping get the engines ready including 18-year-old Mark Reedman, whose first job is to get the fire started. Started earlier today, normally start at 5 o'clock. So quite an interesting night's sleep. I don't have any. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's quite... It's just the pure excitement of it. You know, it happens once a year. It's like, it's like Christmas. But Mark only has eyes for one engine, the Star Attraction. This is it. This is 92 Squadron. Like... <sighs> Beautiful. Oh, it's just such an honour to have, you know what I mean? Just to see an engine like this, you know, as an enthusiast. Head boilersmith Mark is also an avid steam enthusiast. Right now, though, he's more enthusiastic about a spot of breakfast, cooked the traditional steam fireman's way. Quite nice. Cooking breakfast on the shovel. It's even a non-stick shovel one. It's cremated, actually, does that, doesn't it? Rest in peace, God bless it. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, my yolk. <laughs> my free-range egg yolk. Oh, oh I've got bloody clean camp for. 92 Squadron will be the last on show today. Superfan Steve follows the engine all over the country. It's through my dad, I suppose, that I've had this love of steam. I was sort of bribed into joining the society. I came home absolutely filthy as anything, loved every minute of it. If you let her, you could be on here 24-7, and, yeah, she would really take over your life. Besides the engines, there's one thing the Autumn Gala is famous for. Steam. It's like a dry ice effect, isn't it? And the pops start bursting out. That's why, that's why we do galas in the autumn. That's why we do it at this time of year, because of the effects you get. As soon as that steam hits the cold, cold atmosphere, it just condenses and gives you that nice effect. I'm not a train spotter. Right? I don't really take pictures of them or anything, but I think sometimes you can't help yourself, you know what I mean? 
Down on the platforms, it looks like all the hard work has paid off. It's the busiest car I've ever seen. Eight locos running at the minute, with another one joining on later. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. What fun. I love it. This is the way it should be, every single day. <laughs> the engines are pulling in the punters, young and old. Very sick. These are the signatures of the driver and the fireman, and I hope to get them all today. And from far and wide, they've come to marvel at a cavalcade of majestic engines. We're from Alaska. We love trains, so this is a treat for us. You don't see this in America. Finally, the star of the show, the magnificent 92 Squadron engine, is unveiled. And Mark is there to enjoy the moment. Well, we made it here. The engine's got all the way to Pickering, so uh, all good for the gala. It's a happy day so far. The crowds of enthusiasts are just what everyone on the railway wants to see today. Everyone, that is, except for Tim, the events and hospitality manager. What are you actually doing in here today? I thought it was your day off. Day off? Yeah. What are you doing? I've got a wedding. Oh, you want to have here? Wedding number 21. You're joking? On a steam gala? Yeah. Tim, who's not much of a train enthusiast, took a booking for a wedding today, not realising it was slap-bang in the middle of the gala. Did you just go that way? Sorry. At the time of the booking, I wasn't uh, aware that it was a gala. Anyway, we stuck with the original plan because they'd booked the registrars. Testing, testing. Yeah, it's working. What makes NYMR's weddings unique is that you can exchange vows on the platform. They're usually timed between train arrivals. The station's really busy, obviously, with it being gala, and we've just got to hope that so many's not interrupted. <laughs> The wedding was due to kick off at 11. But the bride is late, and the 11.30 from Whitby is on its way. If a train comes in during the ceremony, they're going to have this noise. Um, but I think that, I personally think that might add to it. I'm sure it's every bride's dream, Tim. And that is the bell to say that the train coming in is at Newbridge. So that's going to be here in a couple of minutes. In an ideal world, we would have got the ceremony off on time uh, before that train comes in. The 11.30 is pulling in. This isn't looking good. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to bid you a very warm welcome to the beautiful setting of the railway station here at Pickering. This could be the battle of the trains. On one platform, a steam train. The other, a wedding train. It's going fast, so good. But for the first time this weekend, the engine isn't the star attraction. If there is any person here today who knows of any local impediment to this marriage, they should know. What was that? It looks like Tim might have just got away with it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Oh, it was lovely, wasn't it? Yeah, it was lovely. It was, uh, it really had a real atmosphere about it. Yeah. It was, uh, it was absolutely perfect. It's one of the reasons we chose the place, yeah. it's just for the whole setting and yeah. the way it looked. The weather's perfect for it. It was lovely. Cheers. Everything went smoothly, even the train coming in right as the ceremony was starting. In fact, I think that's the nicest. Um, platform wedding that we've had because they actually had a loco there in front of them the whole time. Just like you planned, eh, Tim? Oh. 
It's the final day of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway's Steam Gala. The three-day event was shaping up to be the best show ever. But the star attraction, 92 Squadron, has broken down with another leak. Here we are, it's just gone five o'clock in the morning, and uh, there's this faint feeling of deja vu. I don't quite know why. Unless Mark can fix it, the engine won't be able to run. With it being one of the visiting engines, it's been pretty popular, and it seems to have quite a decent following. It seems to be people come all over for, to, to see it, so it'd be a bit of a shame if he doesn't make the last day. Talked about being at a cursed engine before now, and kind of living up to its name. Mark has found the cause of the leak and sets about fixing it. There was some with a spray of water coming out, so they're the, worst, they're the ones to concern, because the jet of water will eventually sort of cut into the plate work. For once, it's a simple fix. Basically just re-hammered them round to, to make a seal. Now it's a race to get the engine back up to steam before its scheduled first run. So if it's not ready for the first train, then it's, then it's not ready. So it might mean some unhappy people on the first train, but, you know, if they have to see it further in the day, then it's worthwhile. At Goldland Station, there's a group of steam fans who'll be very disappointed if 92 Squadron is late. Could you move a tiny little bit, please? Thank you. Thank you so much. This lot aren't your average train spotters. Known as Grices, they'll go to any length to spot or photograph heritage trains. And today, they have paid £100 to get the best spots. Take photographs of this in the early morning sun. That's the hope. Sun's starting to come out a bit. Nice, positive-looking morning. And their first target is Kieran and Alistair's freight train, complete with little RAF Douglas perched on one of the wagons. We've travelled up from Suffolk and we stayed in the car, which wasn't the most comfortable evening ever. It's a small car. It's a very small car. And, um, well, here we are. I mean, luckily we've got the weather. James and Laurie are part of a new wave of young steam fans. It's very easy for people to take the mickey and, you know, oh, you like trains, oh, choo-choo, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You just get to a point where you just go, well, yeah, I do, so what? You guys are old enough to actually see steam, but we never got to see this, so it's, it's like time travelling. You get a, a brief moment of how it once was, and that's, that's kind of magical. Having travelled 250 miles and slept in a freezing cold car, James and Laurie are determined to get that extra special snap. Most of the railway has been covered, so that's part of the challenge, is trying to find something new and different that people haven't gone to before. I think you can get up there and over the wall slightly if anybody wants to try it. Last one! I thought you were going all the way down there. I think we might have made a bit of an error here. Not the best of positions. But did they get their perfect picture? It's not so bad. Look at me. I am absolutely saturated. I'm struggling to find sympathy. But look at that. Yeah. Lovely. An adventure. Yeah. It's what we signed up for. It's an I'm... adventure. After his early start fixing 92 Squadron, Mark's finally got some time off. And what better way to spend it than doing some train spotting with your steam mad family? It's nice to spend a, a day away doing a bit different. Mm. Albeit last time we went to go for we did not spend half the afternoon working out how to fix one of the visiting engines. I'm kind of hoping we don't do that this time. But just in case, Tilly's got her overalls on, she can go fix the engines if need be. He forever on call you. <laughs> Drives me insane. <laughs> A good job, I love you. Mark and Emma's mutual love of steam caused their relationship to blossom. 
and the B1 engine pulled their wedding tray. So steam is in baby Tilly's blood. It is. She seems to enjoy it. And there's loads to see, so she's, she's, she's forever looking around at everything. We're not quite sure what her favourite engine is yet, though. We're hoping first words will be B1. After all Mark's hard work on 92 Squadron, he and Emma are on the hunt for the perfect shot of it. I'll try not to fall over. It's about to fall over, it's a bit, uh, a bit bumpy down here. Oh, so steep. I may die. Would it not have been easier to walk here from Gromont? <laughs> Unlike the Grices, Mark knows all the best spots on the line. Even if it is a bit of a hike. Even the baby's tired. <laughs> We're here, though. Yay, civilization! This is great for pictures, this is them. My legs don't particularly care for it, but my eyes like it. <laughs> this is 92 Squadron coming around the corner now, so for me, it's quite a proud moment for me to stand up here and watch the engine I've worked on coming around the corner, point a trailload of people. Hear the whistle. You get excited. You get excited. Here she comes. Better be in focus, Emma. Mark's had his moment, and it turns out for Tilly, her first gala has been a baptism of smoke, not steam. <laughs> a nice face full of smoke. <laughs> <A big> smile. <laughs> That's it. She's addicted to steam edges now. <laughs> what do you think to it, Tilly? You don't look too bad. Ooh, like camera. Can, I, can I take some pictures, please? <laughs> It's been a fantastic gala, NYMR's busiest and best ever. Undoubtedly, the star has been 92 Squadron. After making it back into service, its final run of the gala is going to be particularly poignant for its number one fan, Steve. It was his father's favourite engine, and one that he helped restore. We used to come up here, well, regular as clockwork, really, um, and we'd always sit there filming, you know, watching the trains go past. <laughs> Sadly, his father passed away a year ago, and to mark the anniversary of his death, Steve wants to scatter his ashes in 92 Squadron's firebox. This is now a year today that he passed away. And I thought, it's brilliant. The Loco's here, he put, he put his time and effort into it, like, like me. So uh, I just thought, what a better place, you know. Very good, very nice. Very fitting. Just to say goodbye. So, plus, whenever I come here, I can always have that reflection. I can always sort of think, yeah, he's out there somewhere. <laughs> mm. It's also a moment to reflect for engine shed boss Piglet. With all the hard work we put in, it is nice to come out and actually see the fruit of our labours and actually enjoy it for what it is, you know, and actually sort of join in on a weekend like this, you know. Every single person on this railway is really proud of what they do and what they achieve, you know. And we've got an engine rattling its way towards us. Look out, <laughs> that. There's not many better sights than that, is there? Next time... It's steam and scream as Halloween comes to the railway. Have we got any other witches in the carriage? But it's Kieran's carriages that are the nightmare. This coach is not fit to do anything with. Just rubbish. It's nonsense. And as the end of season comes, the lights go out. We don't provide candles. It's a different ending to the year. <laughs> <laughs>